वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अपर्णा वाटवे फैकल्टी ऑफ टाटा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस दिस मॉड्यूल इज अबाउट फिशिंग एज अ नेचुरल रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट प्रैक्टिस इट इज पार्ट ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड सोसाइटी कोर्स इन दिस मॉड्यूल आई विल बी इंट्रोड्यूसिंग फिशिंग एज अ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ लाइवलीहुड आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट फिशिंग कम्युनिटीज इन इंडिया एंड द टाइप्स ऑफ फिशरीज मेनली द मरीन एंड फ्रेश वाटर फिशरीज we will also look at different fishing practices how they are changing today and the kind of challenges that are faced by fishing communities in india fishing is a form of hunting there is evidence that earliest of the humans lived around wetlands and coastal areas they must have depended largely on fishing as a source of food in recent times fishing provides food supply to a large number of people it is also an important source of protein to many communities traditional methods of fishing differ widely from the commercial modern methods of fishing traditional fisheries involving fishing households are known as artisanal fisheries they are also known as small scale fisheries this is fishing for subsistence it does not involve large corporates it does not involve large boats or mechanized fishing Traditional fishing boats are small, normally make very short trips and are close to the shore. Many variations are today seen in these practices. Today, small boats can be fitted with mechanical devices. Artisanal fisheries are also getting linked to special markets. Artisanal fisheries use diverse tools and techniques for fishing. The simplest of this is fishing rods and hooks which can be used by anyone. fishing nets are also commonly used many communities have devised special wooden or bamboo traps for fishing crab traps are also different in some cases fishing communities build small bunds which channelizes water into the fish traps some communities are so highly skilled that they directly use spears or harpoons in killing the fish fish and other aquatic animals like prawns shrimps crabs clams and octopus are a large part of diet for many people in the world they provide proteins which is an important component of human development fish is a cheap source of proteins and can help in avoiding the problem of malnutrition in the poor communities fisheries can be divided into two types the first of this is marine fishing which takes place exclusively in saline waters the second is freshwater fisheries also known as inland fisheries marine fisheries can be further divided into three types first of this is deep sea fishing deep sea fishing is carried out usually in medium to large boats this is mainly done by men from the fishing communities and they go to the deep seas for fishing Estuaries are areas where the rivers join the sea. Estuarine areas are special as they have alternating freshwater and saline water environment. These have mangrove forests and are very rich ecosystems which have large production of fish and crabs in them. Estuarine fishing is done by communities which live in coastal areas. They use small canoes and use the simplest of the gear and fishing nets. They they have relatively calm and shallow waters and therefore can fish easily with simple gear some animals like mussels can be directly collected from the shore at the time of low tide sundarbans is a important example of mangrove estuarine forest in india it spreads across west bengal and bangladesh it is a world natural heritage site well known for high productivity of the fisheries apart from this chilka lake in orissa pulikat lake in tamil nadu and vembanad lake in kerala are important brackish water lakes these brackish lake provide large quantities of fish for the local communities another important type of marine fisheries is coral reef fisheries coral reefs are structures of calcium carbonate they are secreted by minute organisms 
These are known as rainforests of the sea because they have high diversity of different types of animals in them. Coral reefs are extremely important places for tourism. We have them in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep Islands and also along the west and east coast of India in many places. Coral reef fishing was mainly for food in the past, but today it is also attracting special fishermen who collect fish for aquarium trade. Marine aquariums are very popular and these beautiful fish from the coral reefs can be seen in them. However, it leads to over exploitation of the marine fish. Freshwater fishing can be broadly divided into river fishing and pond or lake fishing. Cold rivers in the Himalayas are a source of large number of special fish like mahasir. They are popular areas for angling or fishing as a sport. Pond fishing is relatively small in scale but is widespread in India. Fishing communities in India are not homogeneous. They belong to different caste. They have distinct traditional practices and structures of social and cultural governance. Different fishing communities are present in different parts of India. Koris and Bhois are fishing communities of Maharashtra. Dhivara is a fishing caste in Kerala. Gangota in Bihar, Manji and Pahadia in Jharkhand are some other examples of fishing castes. Malla caste in North India was into cultivation of a special plant called Makhna. This plant grows in ponds and produces seeds which fall down. These communities used to collect these seeds from underwater and used to produce a kind of popcorn from it. This is a highly nutritional product. They also practice seasonal small scale culture of fish in the flood plains and in the Himalayan foothills. So far we have looked at what was the condition of fishing and fishing communities in India in the past. Today there are many changes in fishing practices. Manual boats are replaced by mechanized boats, mainly due to the various subsidies which are given by the government. New fishing boats have powerful fish locating devices and are fitted with global positioning systems. These changes have led to security of fishing and large catch can be collected. India has a large export potential for marine fish and it is a part of GDP. Fishing is a very productive activity and today it is profitable also. It is taken up now by even people who are not from the fishing communities. Many times, too many number of people fishing has led to over exploitation and it has also led to marginalization of the traditional fishing communities. We have talked about fishing in the natural habitats. However, today we also have possibility of culturing the fish in ponds and in aquatic environments. Highly organized farming of fish is known as pisciculture. In this manner, humans have gained control over fish production. Humans have managed to develop artificial water bodies, both in freshwater as well as coastal areas. Fish culture is actually a very old practice. There are references to it in Kautilya's Arthashastra, which was written more than 2000 years ago. The state of West Bengal has made great advances in fish culture in the early 19th century. Pukurs are man-made ponds. These are specialities of West Bengal landscapes. Pukurs are used for fish culture. They are owned privately or collectively by the villagers. It is impossible to imagine Bengal without its pukurs. Lotus is also cultivated as a vegetable in these pukurs. Rights of access to pukur fish is normally reserved by the owners of the pukur. They can use the pukur for washing, cleaning, bathing and many other purposes. Actual fishing in these tanks is done by people from the fishing caste. There are traditional agreements regarding sharing the catch of fish between different households. Pukurs are maintained regularly by repair, dredging of silts and cleaning and all this is done by the local communities. Just like inland aquaculture, there is also saline aquaculture. Bheris in coastal wetlands of West Bengal 
is a type of fishing culture carried out in coastal farmlands. In Kerala, pokali are rice fields maintained along the coast. These are special salt resistant deep water paddy fields in which fish and shrimps are cultured. Over the last five decades, fish culture has drastically changed. It was first a backyard activity done traditionally by households, but today it's a viable commercial activity. There is a consistent annual growth rate of 6 to 7 percent in fish culture. But inclusion of alien fish has led to the loss of indigenous species of fish. Tilapia is an invasive carnivorous fish. It was introduced first in ponds, but they escaped into all aquatic habitats and spread widely. They destroyed the Indian fish species in many areas. Traditional fishing institutions are groups of people that developed along caste, kinship or religious lines. Communities, fishing communities especially, have always evolved their own management systems. But these are now weakened due to promotion of commercialized fishing. In recent times, new institutions have come up. There is a mechanized boat owners association. There are trade unions of fish workers which protects the labor rights of the fish workers. Fishermen have cooperatives and have undertaken different livelihood promotion works. Self-help groups and federations have also been created. Institutions were very important for claiming the rights of traditional fishing communities. Inland fishermen lost control over water bodies through the process of privatization of water bodies and nationalization. Many rivers in India are today dammed. When the dam was created, the traditional fishermen lost their access to the rivers and lost their livelihoods. When the dam was created, fish were introduced in the dam. But the rights to fish in the dam were taken up by other people who were not the traditional fishermen. This was definitely an infringement of rights of these people. In some areas, the traditional fishermen managed to collectively argue, go to the court and claim their rights of fishing in the dam waters. When a large project is constructed, those who have lost their land often get compensated. But other livelihood practitioners, such as the fishermen who lo lose their rights of fishing, they hardly ever get compensated. Private ownership of river water existed in most states. This worked through contracts and tenures of fishing in the sections of rivers. These sections of rivers were auctioned for fishing. Like zamindars or landlords, there used to exist panidars or water lords in the states of UP and Bihar. They employed traditional fishers as date bonded and wage laborers. Jalkar leases were some of the most exploitative of practices in India. There were frequent and violent conflicts between the rich and the poor fishermen, between the laborers and between the water lords in the rivers. Ganga Mukti Andolan was carried out to abolish the feudal system of water rights, but the conflicts continue till now. Today, criminal elements have entered this because of the high economic gains. There is no tenural security for traditional fishermen. Community control for management of fisheries offers a potential alternative. We have looked at social and political problems faced by fishing communities, but there are other problems also. Several factors threaten the security of fishing. The first is environmental degradation of all aquatic habitats. Ponds and riverine fisheries compete with agriculture for the use of rivers. River fishing has almost collapsed due to the excessive use of fresh water by the society. Multiple dams, barrages and hydropower projects have come up all across India. There were rules regarding maintaining minimal flow in the rivers. But this was often ignored. Land losses were compensated but losses of fishermen were ignored by all. All the freshwater bodies are today subjected to heavy pollutions. It is impossible to use river or pond water directly for, for drinking or for any other purpose. 
there are large scale changes in global marine environment due to climate change and pollution. Most of the marine areas have been overexploited. In fact, there was a talk about marine drought or fishing drought in the past few years. Ministry of Environment and Forest created a coastal regulation zone notification to guard the coastal environment and also to protect the livelihoods of the artisanal fishermen. This notification prevented non-fishing activities from coming up on the coastal areas. Traditional fishing communities were very highly supportive of this notification. But there were other commercial lobbies which went to the court and tried very hard to reduce these restrictions. Today, traditional fishing communities in most areas are highly marginalized. They are politically unorganized, socio-economically underdeveloped. Special efforts are needed for livelihood development of the communities. It is necessary that we understand the importance of fish as a food for people in India. It is necessary to protect the fishing grounds as well as the traditional knowledge of the fishing communities in India. We need to take help of laws and policies in this effort. In this module, we looked at different types of fishing in India. We also learned about different fishing communities and the kind of fishing practices that were used in the past. We also looked at aquaculture or fish culture as a modern method of cultivating fish. Some of the challenges such as habitat degradation were mentioned in case of fishing communities. Climate change poses a great risk to all aquatic environments. In the inland areas, if the rainfall reduces, there is no hydrological cycle to replenish the water that is lost from the rivers and ponds. There is excess use of groundwater at the same time and the rivers and ponds are drying up. In coastal areas, fishing villages are normally all along the coast. Climate change is leading to increasing frequency of cyclones and tsunamis. This directly affects the fishing villages. In 1999, in the super cyclone, thousands of lives were lost and millions of property was damaged. Today, the beaches which are used by coastal communities are also under threat. In many areas, the fishing required use of common beach lands. Beaches were used by the coastal communities for maintenance of boats, repair is of all kinds, creating and drying of fishing nets. These are all important activities part of the fishing. The fisherwomen also had a small business going on on the beaches. They produce dry fish, which is again a major supply of protein for many households. All this required large areas on the beach. But today, ecotourism is trying to claim many areas of these beaches. If resorts come up, they do not want any fishing activity near the resort. This is loss of common lands because of privatization. Privatization of beaches, of ponds, of rivers is one of the most serious threat that is affecting natural resource use by the fishing communities. Fishing activities are directly divided along the gender lines. The men are involved in actual fishing, they go to the sea and collect the fish. However, it is the women of the household who play the most important role of trading the fish. They get the catch, they sort the fish, they grade the fish into different uh, sizes and then take them to the market for sale. Fishing women were known very much for their strong and sometimes aggressive character. They had a very strong role to play in the fishing households. In the traditional fisheries, women were respected and they had their importance in the whole activity. However, when commercialization happened and corporate farming of uh, fish started, women's role was lost. The fish was graded by the laborers and directly sent for export. The women completely lost their livelihoods because of commercialization. The men, the fishing community men, turned into laborers who worked for somebody else 
who was investing in the fishing. I hope you found this module interesting. You can also take a look at our e-text for more information. You can also look at the essential reading which has books and papers which give detailed information on this subject. Thank you for being with us.